I'm really gung-ho about this next G.I. Joe video. Today we're talking all about our Louisiana-born Sergeant Major Etienne Lafitte, the man who would come to be known by the codename Gung-Ho. And here's a quote that best describes him. All Marines are crazy, but Gung-Ho is the hairiest, scariest, and craziest jarhead that ever scratched, kicked, and bit his way out of the hole in the swamp they call Paris Island. Before we begin, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics. Whether it's your first time here or you're back for more, don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this one. Let's get back to Gung Ho. Gung Ho's Action Force Intelligence profile says that he hails from the Florida Swamplands, a slight deviation from his U.S. counterpart, which is this. After growing up in a large back swamp Cajun clan, 137 strong, in his small town, ATN moved to New Orleans. Not quite an adult yet, where he started fighting with his fists and knives. As tough as a bayou gator, he was sharpening his pugilistic fisticuff proficiency one defeated opponent at a time. As soon as he legally could, ATN joined the United States Marine Corps, graduated from MCRD PI in South Carolina with distinguished honors. He then went on to Airborne, Marine Ordnance, Recondo, and Camp Johnson's administration schools, all while qualifying in all manner of NATO and Warsaw Pact weaponry. Gung Ho himself is a Recondo instructor as well as a jungle warfare instructor. As the story goes, he was just crazy enough and just tough enough to join the G.I. Joe team, which happened in Larry Hama's 11th issue of G.I. Joe A Real American Hero. Apparently, this is when they started bringing in warriors from branches other than Army. This was 1983, and the same year that his first action figure hit toy shelves. He came with teal camo BDUs and a mean XM-76 grenade launcher. Ron Rudat, famed figure designer for Hasbro, says he was inspired by his own father who served in the South Pacific with the Marines. He incorporates EGAs into all of his marine designs, and Gung Ho's chest symbol is one of those, although he did change it a little bit to make it more graphic. This 11th issue found the G.I. Joe team in Alaska to stop Cobra from poisoning the Alaskan oil pipeline. Then, this bare-chested jarhead showed up in the wilderness. The 5 degree Fahrenheit below zero temperatures didn't phase him, and the rest of the Joes were not quite sure how to take this new recruit until he charged a troop of Cobra Vipers all by himself and quickly earned their respect after he defeated each and every Cobra Viper alone. His code name never more appropriate up to that point than in that moment. In the next couple issues, Gung Ho joined up with Breaker, Stalker, and Snake Eyes to head into Sierra Gorda's Rio Lindo in order to investigate a front company for Cobra. This particular front company was run by the Baroness and Dr. Venom. When they first entered the building is when they ran into Quinn. The Joes were captured and Snake Eyes thought KIA. The Joes were bound with rope and put on a riverboat and sent upriver. Gung Ho had a plan though. They spit out their gum, which attracted rats onto the small vessel who proceeded to eat through the rope, binding their hands together, freeing them, although they pretended to be bound until they reached their destination dock, where Gung Ho smashed the Cobra's heads together. Just as Snake Eyes revealed, he didn't die, he was alive, and he had caught up with them. But that's not all who showed up. The Baroness showed up, dive-bombed the boat. Breaker, Gung Ho, and Stalker jumped into the water just as it was destroyed. But then she blew up the entire island, with Snake Eyes once again thought dead. Gung Ho jumped in the back of a pig herder's truck and headed into town, sneaking into a local radio station to radio the pit for aid and to request an extraction, which happened soon thereafter, and they were all saved. In issue 22, the team looked on in awe as Gung Ho hammered a large wooden beam back into place, which stopped a roof from collapsing with his fist. In another feat of strength, Gung Ho tore the door off a Shelby GT Cobra, which is a really awesome car, and then used the door as a weapon to beat the vehicle some more. When Cobra Commander was captured, Gung Ho was part of the team that held him in the bunker atop a rocky outpost in the Rocky Mountain Range. Storm Shadow swooped in on a glider, and it was Gung Ho who popped off a RPG and allowed Roadblock to drag him back in the snow. But the mission benched him for a brief recovery time as he was injured by Storm Shadow. In issue 37, Tomax and Zaymot and Flint's first issue. Gung Ho, along with Blowtorch, helped fight off the CGs during the Arbco Circus. And the next issue began Gung Ho's second trip into Sierra Gordo. This time he went in with Ripcord, Stalker, and Roadblock, met up with Rakondo, and were tasked with rescuing Dr. Adele Burkhart. After a run-in with Rakondo's friendly Takara and a firefight with some baddies, it was mission accomplished. Ten issues later, and Zartan was running around the G.I. Joe HQ, changing his appearance to different soldiers and marines. Gung Ho ran into a duke that wasn't duke, so Gung Ho chased him, <laughs> and when they ran into the new guy, Sergeant Slaughter, he was faced with two Gung Ho's as Zartan had changed his appearance. A lucky punch from Sergeant Slaughter took out the real Zartan. It wasn't long after this that Gung Ho was part of a security team tasked with invading Springfield. 
And then during Cobra's Civil War, Gung Ho was part of the prong that took the airfield in the control tower. Except the mission failed, and the jugglers, that corrupt cabal of generals at the Pentagon, had most of the team arrested. Roadblock and Hawk were able to expose them and free the team, and he would remain a prominent member of the team until 1994's issue 155 and their decommissioning. And this was that DDP image non-canon time when Gung Ho was a field commander and later put on active reserve. When we get back to the Homiverse, we find Gung Ho on the team with Clutch and Lady J, who were in a desolate, seemingly deserted town of Springfield to rescue Chuckles, who was being held hostage under a video arcade. Issue 188 found Gung Ho in a rib off the coast of East Africa, bearing down on a survey ship that had been taken over by pirates. He's joined by Scarlet, Torpedo, Beachhead, and Stalker. With stormy seas bracketing the vessel, Gung Ho launched grapples from the small boat. They climbed up, Stalker fell, but Gung Ho caught him before he hit the raging waters below. They breached the mess hall, led by a Cajun headbutt from none other than Gung Ho, and that's when they ran into Black Major and his paramilitary red shirts. Well, the Red Shadows. An armored cyborg met up with Gung Ho, Stalker, and Scarlet atop the top deck, and so they unloaded their clips right into him with little effect. But a shaped charge took it out as Gung Ho kicked it overboard. They continued to sweep of the ship, but they ran into the Red Shadows again who held their ground until Gung Ho let fly a 40 Mike Mike frag from an underbarrel M203. But the Red Shadows kept coming! Gung Ho and Beachhead were hit and pinned down until the Tomahawk showed up to unleash Roadblock's Modus on their candy asses. Torpedo yells that they need to secure the helipad so the Tomahawk can land and rescue the two injured, so he made it out but injured. And it's on the disabled list now, but probably remains an active reserve and, or base duty going forward. He was president at Snake Eye's funeral is one of the Joes that carried the flag-draped casket into the plane bound for burial at Arlington. And then the next time he showed up is on the back of the wraparound cover for issue 225, where he's taken out a CG standing atop a mean dog. And then there's a brief cameo at the memorial in issue 263. And that's the last time he appeared, but rest assured though, he'll be called up again in the future. His V5 figure gave him command of the Mega Marines and came with yellow bio armor and a Xeno Blaster, which was a spring-loaded gun all the rage at the time that you could fire across the living room floor. I think I might have done that a few times. I guess that's what you need if you're hunting Mega Monsters, the Bio Vipers, and Monstro Vipers that Dr. Mindbender created. Gung Ho's tasked with guarding Serpentor in G.I. Joe the movie. It's a small role, sure, but a very important one. On the cartoon, one particular episode saw the data files for Seven Joes hacked by the Baroness, and so she took a squad of Cobra to get Gung Ho's family. But that crazy old Swamp family easily took them over, and she went running. He was a little gruff and always ready for a fight on the show, and he was voiced by the legendary Chris Lotta. Yes, the same Chris Lotta that voiced both Starscream and Transformers and Cobra Commander. By the way, Lotta is also the original Mr. Burns on The Simpsons and part of Al Bundy's No Ma'am Club. That's it for another video for another time. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be part of all of our videos, new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.